Hello ladies and gentlemen, let's look at Advanced Algebra Chapter 7.2, Exponential Decay. Now, for Exponential Decay, when we look at B, that is telling us whether it's decay or growth. When B is between 0 and 1, it's going to be a decay. So anything between 0 and 1, decimal or fraction, it's going to be an exponential decay. Okay, it's going to be curving down. All right. At any time, if I'm going too fast, please pause the video, rewind, whatever you need to do. All right, here we go. So let's say we have y equals 2 times 1 half to the x power. Again, in this situation, we have 2, that is our a value, and b is the 1 half. All right, I'm going to use the calculator to assist me. Okay, so I'm going to go to my y equals, and I am going to type this in. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to use the parentheses. You need to put that in parentheses, the fraction, and then I'm going to raise it to the x power. All right, if I really, if I want to see the graph, remember zoom six if your graph's not normal, and you can see, yep, that is definitely an exponential decay. All right, but that's not what I want to look at right now. I want to look at the table because I want to graph accurately. All right, so I'm going to move my table back. I want to find as many integer numbers as I can so that I can make a decent graph. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. So, well, the 16 will not fit. So let's start with the negative 2, 8. Okay, so I'm going to write down those integers, and that's what I'm going to use. So here we go. So we've got the negative 2, 8, the negative 1, 4, the 0, 2, 1, 1, and I think I'm going to go one more. I'm going to go with 2 and then the 0.5 or the half. All right. Now, I'm going to plot these dots. So I've got the negative 2, 8. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right, so here's the negative 2, 8. And I've got the negative 1, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And I've got the 0, 2. And I've got the 2 and then up a half. Nope, I've got the 1, 1 yet. Okay, 1, 1. And the 2 up a half. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. All right, so this line is curving down like this. Now remember, it cannot cross that x-axis. Okay, that is actually our asymptote. Okay, it can, it should not cross. If you go to your calculator, all right, and if I keep doing this, okay, if I keep going down, look at my second column, those numbers just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now that, that scientific notation, remember, that does not mean it's a negative. Okay, it's just getting closer and closer and closer and closer to zero. All right, so remember that is called the asymptote, okay? The boundary line that it will not cross. So in this situation, the asymptote is the x-axis, so that means it cannot cross, so the y is equal to zero because it's horizontal. The domain the domain in this situation, all of the x values work. Okay, I can go up, I can look at those negatives, I can go into the positives. There are no error messages. Okay, so all of the domain values work. So all real numbers. The domain is all real numbers. However, because of the asymptote, ladies and gentlemen, the range will not be 
all real numbers. Okay, the range, if you look, okay, we can, the, the y values get larger and larger and larger and larger and larger and larger, okay, and it gets closer and closer and closer and closer to zero when we go the other direction, all right? So the range values are going to be bigger than, technically it should not reach zero, so it's going to be greater than zero. All right, so there's the first one. Let's look at another one. All right, in this case, we have y equals 2 times 1 fourth to the x power minus 5. So again, in this situation, a is 2, b is 1 fourth. All right, so let's go ahead and put this into the calculator and come up with some dots that we can plot. All right, so 2 times 1 fourth to the x power all right let me double check yep to the x power and then we have minus five okay let's go to the table all right Oh, we've got an interesting thing going on there. All right, so let's see what type of dots that I can plot. Okay, whoa, those are getting way too big already. So let's see, I've got negative 1, 3. I've got 0, negative 3. And I think I'm going to go ahead and plot the 1 and negative 4.5. I'm just going to take a quick peek at the graph. Oh, okay. So there, that's what the graph looks like. Okay, well, I also notice when I'm looking at the table, okay, you probably saw it when I had the screen up, that it's getting closer and closer to negative 5, and then all of a sudden it just says negative 5. Okay, well, again, that deals with the asymptote. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing plotted first. All right, so I'm going to use negative 1, 3, 0, negative 3, 1, negative 4.5. All right, so negative 1, 3, 0, negative 3, 1, 4, negative 4 and a half. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. All right, so this one's a little bit more tricky to graph, but it looks like it's doing this bit right there. Just do the best you can on that. Okay, let me take another peek. Yep, that looks close enough to me. All right, so the asymptote is leveling off right here. That's the boundary line, and that would be where y is negative 5. Huh, look at that. So the asymptote is at negative 5. The domain, well, the domain has not changed. All the numbers are still working. So the domain is all real numbers. Okay, the range. Okay, well, let's take a look. Let's go back to the table. Let's see. Okay, it doesn't go past negative 5, um, and then, but all the numbers bigger than that work. Okay, so the range y is greater than negative 5. Okay, let me do that in purple so I stay color-coded here. All right, and again, look at your asymptote to help you with that. All right. So what did this minus 5 do to the problem? Okay, well, it made it shift down 5 units. All right, next one. Okay, this time we see that in the exponent we've got an x minus 3. Now, just a warning here, you are going to, those of you with the old calculators, 
you're going to have to put parentheses around that, okay? So here we go. So go to your y equals. Let's clear that out. So let's see. We've got 2 times 1 fourth to the x minus 3. All right. So 2 times 1 fourth. And again, those of you with the old calculators, you have to use parentheses. Those of you with the new ones, you don't. All right, so I'm going to take a peek at the graph quick. Oh, the graph is further to the right. Hmm, okay. Let's see. Let's take a look at the table. That's not the table. Let's try that again. There we go. All right, so let's see what kind of points that I could plot. Ooh, doesn't look like very many again. It looks like I can plot the 2, 8, the 3, 2, and the 4, and the 0.5. Okay. All right. So let me write those down over here. We can do the 2, 8, the 3, 2, and the 4, and the half. All right. So let's see. 2, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2, 8. 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and 4, and then a half. 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half. And again, when I look at the calculator, it looks like it's leveling off. Yep, it's leveling off at that x-axis again. Okay, so it's going to come down like this, and it's going to level off right there. All right, well, that means, again, if you look, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing, there's nothing behind that so the asymptote is zero okay that's where it's leveling off again the domain has not changed okay the domain is still all real numbers the range well the range in this case okay would be back to y is greater than zero All right. Okay. So what did this minus 3, x minus 3, do to it? Well, it made it shift 3 units right. It shifted it 3 units to the right. Okay, that should look very familiar. We just got done doing that with square roots. All right, and we did it with quadratics earlier in the year. All right, moving on. Okay, so this time we have all of it together. So let's see. We are going to type this in and see what we come up with. So, all right, I'm just going to start. It's easier to just type the whole thing over again. So 2 to the 1 fourth, 2 times to 1 fourth to the x plus 5. All right, again, those of you with old calculators, make sure you use parentheses. And what else do we have behind it? Minus 3. All right, I'm going to take a peek at it. Oh, look at that. It, it went, it's left and it's down. Okay, it went left and it went down. Okay, so let's see. Um, some ordered pairs. Oh, we can see it's leveling off at negative 3, so let's see if we have some dots that we can plot. Okay, so it looks like we can plot negative 6, 5, negative 5, negative 1, negative 4, negative 2 and a half. All right. So let me write those down quick. I don't have my table on this one. So negative 6, 5, negative 5, negative 1, negative 4, negative 2 and a half. All right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 5, negative 1, negative 4, and then, then down 2 and a half right there. And, and then it looks, it's leveling off at negative 3. All right, it's leveling off right there. So my asymptote, oh, well, again, you should have already known the asymptote is going to be at negative 3. 
The domain has not changed. Everything still works, all real numbers. And the range, okay, well, the range deals with the asymptote. And it's getting bigger, so y is greater than negative 3. Again, it should never reach negative 3. All right. Now, decay models. So, let's say a new car cost $25,000. The value of the car decreases by 15% each year. Write an exponential decay model giving the car's value y in dollars after t years. Okay, so we've got this equation up above. Now, the a is the starting value. Okay, and obviously the R is the rate, and the T is the time. All right, well, the starting value is the 25,000. The rate is 15%, but remember, you always change that to a decimal, so we got to use 0.15. All right, so first of all, it says T years. So here we go. So we're going to go Y equals 25,000 times 1 minus 0.15 to the T power. Now, you could rewrite that and just say 25,000 times 0.85 because 1 minus 0.15 is 0.85 to the T power. Estimate the value after four years. So Y equals 25,000 times 0.85 to the fourth power. All right, let's type that in. So it looks like the value of the car is now $13,050 and 16 cents. We should round appropriately. $13,050.16. All right, let's keep going. All right, medicine. To treat some forms of cancer, doctors use radioactive iodine. The amount a patient receives is usually 20 millicuries. That decreases each day by 8% in the human body. Write an equation to model the situation. Okay, so y equals the starting amount is 20 times 1 minus the rate. Well, the rate as a decimal is 0 0.08. And let's see, it's each day, so the time is in days. So there it is. There's our model. So how much is left after two days? Okay, well, first I'm going to rewrite this as 20 times 0.92. 1 minus 0.08 is 0.92 to the T. All right, so Y equals 20 times 0.92 to the second power. All right, let's see what that is. Looks like 19.208. So after two days, there's still 19.208 millicuries in the body. After four days, let's see. After four days, I'm just going to change that exponent to a four. Eighteen point, we'll say eighteen point four five. Okay, it's not leaving the body too quickly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Good luck.